support the, those parents. That's amazing. <laughs> okay, so you guys ready to go? All right, let's jump back into the Word. Uh, go ahead and open up to Proverbs, of course, chapter 9. And today is going to be our final installment of this series. So this is uh, number 12 in our series. And I've had a couple people kind of give, give me some gruff. It's like, hey, the, the book doesn't end in chapter 9. And I am aware of that, okay? And so as you go on throughout the book, it gets quite topical in nature, which is wonderful. And then at the end of the book, you'll see more of these speeches and focusing in on various aspects of wisdom. So I would encourage you to continue to read this book. I gave a challenge near the front side of this to you all to put it into your daily reading and take a chapter a day and to meditate on it and get it into your regular spiritual diet, so to speak, and to listen to God's Word. So today, each and every one of us will have to make a decision. And the decision has been illustrated to us throughout these opening nine chapters of Proverbs. That is, you and I have a choice to either, A, listen to God our Father and embrace the wisdom that he has for us, or B, listen, so to speak, to Lady Folly or our own understanding and live life the way in which we think is the wisest and truest way. Now, all of us in this room probably will say, well, of course, I am going to listen to God's wisdom. But if I uh, followed your life and if you followed my life, do we always truly follow the path of wisdom? And the answer has to be, well, no, right? But genuine, genuinely and genuinely, we want to follow God and wholeheartedly listen. Because if we listen to his word, if we give ourselves over to the wisdom that is greater and deeper and richer than our own, we will find life along the way and receive eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And so God is a good father, and he shows himself as a good father over and over and over again. Pleads and begs and gives us um, reasons and opportunities to listen to his word. And today, in this final uh, chapter, before they start into all of these various proverbs, it kind of sums up the choice. And we're going to see two really identical Invitations by two uh, very, very different personifications of women. One being Lady Wisdom, and we'll see her invitation in the first number of verses in, in chapter 9. And then right in the middle, we'll see some of the characteristics of people who either mock God or listen to him. And then at the final, there is Lady Folly giving her invitation. And each one of these invitations are put out to each one of us. Whose invitation will we listen to? Whose home will we enter into? Whose food will we dine upon? You and I have a choice. And so I hope and I pray, and we pray it again this morning for each and every one of us, that we would listen and that we give ourselves over and that we seek God and follow his word to us. And my hope is that that is your heart this day as well. It is much better to learn and live versus live and learn, right? We can say amen to that, right? Much better to listen beforehand to learn the right thing and follow that path versus not listen and suffer the consequences of our own actions and activities. So God gives us opportunity to listen to him and then to live. So let us give ourselves to so doing that very thing. So here's the first point, and if you have notes, you can follow along. Those of you online, they're there for you as well. You can go over to our website, click on them. They'll be right there for you as well if you would like them. First point, receive wisdom's invitation. So this is my bias. This is God's 
biased that we would receive this invitation from wisdom. So let's read together Proverbs 9, starting with verse 1. Now, wisdom has built her house. She has set up its seven pillars. She has prepared her meat and minced mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her servants, and she calls from the highest point of the city. Let all who are simple come to my house. To those who have no sense, she'll say, come, eat my food and drink the wine I have mixed. Leave your simple ways and you will live. Walk in the way of insight. So this is the first invitation. And this comes from the wisdom of God personified as Lady Wisdom. And the image is striking and it's strong. The first thing I want you to notice about this lady is that she's quite active, right? She's just not sitting on the front porch of her reality just waiting for someone to come by. This is not this lady. Look at all of the things that she is doing from this passage. Wisdom has built her house. It is preparation. It is forethought. It is hard work. It is organization. It is planning for the future. And this sense the needs of her family, but also needs of the greater community. It tells us about wisdom and God himself that he plans ahead, right? God is not governing the universe by the seat of his pants, trying to make it up as it goes along. You can say amen right there, right? He knows what is happening. Storms never catch him off guard, right? He is sovereign. He knows how all things came to be because he created them, and he knows about how history ends, and he is governing everything. God prepares ahead Wisdom prepares and is actively working. Lady Wisdom has built her house. It is a solid house. Back in that day, having pillars was something quite grand. Seven pillars meaning um, um, uh, completion. It was a complete setup. She had thought of everything. And this was like a very grand estate. She has prepared her meat. That is, they could not go to their fridge and just get to the freezer and just take things out. She had to raise the animals, had to prepare some place for them to live, had to get together the grain, had to take care of these things year after year after year. This is a thoughtful process. This is a preparation that thinks ahead. Mixed her wine, grapes, Grew and it took a long time. They had to be tended to, and she mixed it together wonderfully and well. Set her table, sent out her servants, and calling out. God has set a table for you. We read about it in Psalm 23, even in the presence of our enemies. We see about the final supper of the Lamb, and we read about it in the book of Revelation. And we have an invitation to participate in what he has prepared for you. And so it's not that God does not extend his invitation. The question is, are we responding to our great King? This is a question you have to ask. And this is not just what is there for us in eternity, but he offers us a banquet in his presence every day from the wisdom of his word. Wisdom calls out to us. God, help us to have ears 
that here, to wake daily, we saw last week, at the door of God saying, God, I want to know. God, I need your help. And this, of course, requires humility, but not necessarily simplicity. He calls to us because in comparison to God, we are simple creatures. You can say amen, right? It says, leave your simple ways. Think grander. Think bigger. Think greater. Understand what I have. Understand my ways, and they are good. And will you accept my invitation? This is an invitation that is extended to you. Leave your simple ways, this thinking so um, uh, microscopically, so littlely, so smallly. And will you lift your eyes up and say, God, help me, show me from your perspective. And because of the grace of God, he helps us. He didn't have to do that, by the way. He chose He chooses to. I want you to see God's wisdom in extending us his invitation to be with him, to learn from him, to participate in what he has. But it requires us to leave simplicity and embrace his complexity And understand his sovereignty. And trust him. So will you enter into the house of God and the good things that lay there for you? And his promise is life. And it is a beautiful, multi-course banquet. Now that's one invitation. And then our writer, which is Solomon, goes on now and describes in his middle six sections uh, various characteristics of people who mock or resist God and those who embrace and follow God. So each of us, and this is the next point, have an opportunity to choose your character. That is not being a character. That's different, right? Right? Choosing who you are, choosing your values, choosing what you think is right and good and honoring. We all have an opportunity to choose who we are by what we value. And there is a contrast in this section as well. And we can read about that, and let's do so starting with verse 7. Now, whoever, this is interesting, (laughs) corrects a mocker, invites insult. Now, a mocker is someone who thinks they know more than everyone else, right? These are the armchair quarterbacks that are sitting there on their front porch observing your life, and then they're mocking you. Well, if I was them, I wouldn't do that, right? They don't know what they're doing, do they, right? Those with the gift of discouragement. You know some of those people, right? The gift that keeps on giving, right? No matter what you do, they're going to tell you how you could have done it better. No matter what you do, they will not support it regardless, right? Mockers, right? who they think their spiritual gift is to insult people. And so here are some people, whoever corrects a mocker, this is interesting, invites insult. Let's continue to read. Whoever rebukes the wicked incurs abuse. Do not rebuke mockers or they hate. Semicolon. Right? 
So the advice is, if someone is a mocker, if you choose to try to correct them, you're going to be insulted. Have you ever done that before? Have any of you ever been on Facebook? Right? Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo! Wow! Turned into the wild, wild west. I have tried my hand <laughs> to at least give my perspective on some things and some people. Have you ever done that and all you run into is a brick wall? The facts don't matter. Time and time and time and time. I've had conversations with people that had come away with shrapnel because they just blew up on me. There's a difference between people who want to know the truth and people who want to make their point. You hear me. Be a person who wants to know the truth, even if it's different than what you want to believe. I'm going to let that sink in. Often I base my responses to people not primarily about what they say, but by who they are. If I think they'll hear, I talk. If I think they will not hear, I have to ask myself, what's my responsibility to this person? And often I don't. They think they know the truth. They think they know what's right. Have a responsibility at times to warn. But even God himself turns us over to our own foolishness. Isn't that curious? So we have this mocker, a person who, when corrected, returns with insults. When rebuke returns with abuse. How do you know if you're a mocker or not? How do you respond when someone corrects you? That's how you know. Do you listen? Do you respond with grace? Rebuke the wise, and they will, see that? Love you. Instruct the wise, And they will be wiser still. Teach the righteous. And they will add to their learning. So how do you respond? When you have an opinion that is different than yours. And we have multiple opinions about everything. I'm grateful for freedom of speech. We can say amen to that. Hallelujah. I'm grateful. I'm grateful that we can have it dialogue. But I am troubled in when our dialogue turns into a war. We are more siloed as a country. You understand silo, right? We're siloed, separated in our opinions and our groups than ever. Why? Because no one wants to listen to anybody else. They want everyone to listen to them. It's kind of quiet in here, isn't it? It's true. Everyone wants a microphone. And if you don't agree with what they're saying, you're an idiot. Right? Isn't that how, how we've come? God, help us to be people who pursue truth versus people who pursue platform. So God puts us in the middle, and it's interesting <laughs> that he says, this is how mockers respond to correction. This is how the wise respond to correction. So 
people who assume that they're wise, all I have to do and all you have to do is examine how you respond to correction. Then you'll know what you are. And verse 10, this is where it's laid out. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Sound familiar? And knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. If you want to be wise and go down that pathway, you have to enter through the gate of the fear of the Lord. You can be a wise person on this earth and accumulate lots of money and wealth and popularity and all these things, but you are not taking it with you. They don't make purses with trailer hitches on them. True wisdom starts with understanding that there is a God that is greater than you. There is a power stronger than yours. There is a God in which we must all give an account to. If you start in recognizing that your life is not your own, you were bought with the price, if you recognize that we will have to give an account to the living God, it strikes some fear in you, and it strikes some humility in you. Satan's primary Achilles heel, that in his God-given, glorious self. At one point, he was glorious. He became proud and thought he was higher than the Most High. We are capable of falling into the same trap, thinking we know better than even God himself. How foolish. Fear the Lord, beginning of wisdom. Knowledge of the Holy One, understanding. Now, how is theology, knowledge of God, understanding? Have you ever wondered what is happening to you in your life? Anyone? All of us. Have you ever understood why the world is how it is? Have you thought, what is happening and how do I fit into this? If you know God, you'll be able to see clearer what is happening in this planet. God in his justice will bring justice to those who for now seem like they're getting away with murder. And they are. They are for a while, but not forever. God in his mercy allows people during this time between the first and second coming of Christ to have opportunity to taste and see that he is good. So he waits God's patience is an expression of his love if you've ever wanted God to move more quickly you do not understand God fully trust him you'll get understanding of yourself get understanding of your relationships you'll get understanding of a church and the community if you understand God and his counsel and his principles it'll give you perspective that's why you'll gain understanding and you'll be wise do not let no one deceive himself first corinthians three eighteen. if anyone among you thinks that he or she is wise in this age let him become a fool that he or she may become wise for the wisdom of this world is folly with God. For it is written, he catches the wise in their craftiness. Every time I sin, every time you sin, we're saying to God that our way is better than his. You know that? That's what we're doing. God, I know you say not to lie, but I know lying is better than not lying. Isn't that what we're saying? God, I know you say not to steal, 
But God, man, that is like available to me right now. And nobody will ever know. Is this making sense? He catches the wise in their craftiness. Verses 11. For through wisdom, your days will be many. This is a promise. And years will be added to your life. If you are wise, your wisdom will reward you. If you are a mocker, you alone will suffer. Wisdom will give you life to your mind, to your emotions, to your body, to your soul. You ever read that a joyful heart gives or is a good medicine? Have you read that before? Proverbs 17, 22, where does that come from? Understanding there's a sovereign Lord. Understanding that he will never leave you nor forsake you. Understanding that there are good gifts that he's given to you. Understanding that any difficult situation will not last forever. Understanding that you are saved by grace through faith. And that you have a redeemer. So regardless of how difficult your circumstance is, and some of the circumstances are indeed horrific. There's always a hope because we have a good Father that helps us to have wisdom, that gives us a new perspective, that helps us to have strength to endure, to be encouraged. Helps our mental state, our emotional state, our physical state. Extends our years and adds to our life. Wisdom will reward you. But if you choose to mock God, if you choose to say that you are higher and greater and smarter and better, He'll let you think that. And you'll suffer for it. So we each have a choice to choose who and what we value. We have an invitation from God. We choose our character. And then we have the second invitation. And I would encourage you to resist folly's invitation. This is Lady Folly who continues to call out even to this day, verse 13. Now, in contrast, folly is a unruly woman. She's here, she's there, she's everywhere. She's boisterous, she's arrogant, she's loud. She's simple and knows Now she, see the contrast from Lady Wisdom, what does she do? Sits. She sits at the door of her house, sitting there idly on a seat at a very visible point in the city, the highest point. She calls out to those who pass by, who go straight on their ways, same exact words as wisdom, but, but all who are simple come to my house. To those who have no sense, she says, <laughs> stolen water, tastes good, y'all, tastes good. Food eaten in secret, nobody will know. Ah, oh, that's the best kinds of food. A little do the simple know. That behind the doors of her house, the morgue, the dead are there. Little do the simple know that her guests are deep. 
realm of the dead. You can't get much more of a greater contrast between the results of the imitation of the wisdom of God versus the results of the imitation of the wisdom of the world, which is folly. The wisdom of the world is get as much as you can for as little as you can. Hey, you should go work there. They don't require you to do anything. I want that job. Hey, you know what? You know what? If you steal a little bit, you get a little bit on the side, that's sweet. Hey, no one needs to know. We can have this in secret. Appealing, why? Doesn't take a lot of work. <laughs> Appealing, why? You don't really have to pay for anything. You will indeed pay. And pay dearly. If you resist God and his word, it seems easy. But it ends in death. God's goodness is right and true, but the wisdom of the world ends in death. It is folly. I can go to the next slide. Looks great, ends poorly. Party now. And you will pay later. There is a proper season, and there is good wisdom. And you have a choice. So in conclusion, you, and personalize it, you, okay? You, 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 me included, we have a choice. Will you choose the path of wisdom and humility when you have issues, when you need help, seek it? Or will you persist down the road <laughs> Of folly. <laughs> you have a choice. If you choose folly, all you have to do is keep on living according to your fallen nature. <laughs> it looks like it'll give you life, but it'll take it in the end. The way of wisdom is the way of Christ which is you die to yourself so that you will live eternally, really. The exact opposite of the wisdom of the world that says, live now, pay later. God says, I have paid, right? Will you follow me? Deny yourself. Become less and you will become more and the reward of your life will be great. So this is why we give. This is why we love. This is why we sacrifice because it's the way of wisdom and the way of our, of our Father. I want to encourage you, yeah, to keep your eyes on Jesus. Right? New Testament tells us that He is the power and the wisdom of God. That's the invitation. Fix your eyes on Christ. Grow in your understanding from the word in prayer from how he created nature from people who know God we can grow to always keep your eyes on Jesus the power and the wisdom of God not only knowing what to do but giving us power to do it that's our invitation today so I'm going to pray for us and if you would bow your heads God, I know, we know that there are people in this room and listening online that are facing choices, some of them minute, but some of them gargantuan in nature. 
And God, I ask that each one of us would um, respond in humility to your invitation to dine with you. God, will you forgive us this day of our arrogance, of our mocking, of our rebellion of you? God, give us a new spirit this day. Forgive us of our sins and make us new, God. And give us ears to hear what you're saying to us. Starting even this afternoon and into this week. That we would be people who choose in humility you. Thank you for your extension, extension of your invitation to join you. Help us to see the truth of the choice. That is laid before us. So thank you for my friends who are here, God, your children. And God, will you continue to grace us with your presence and grow us in maturity that we would be abundantly fruitful because of your spirit working within us. Thank you for your good invitation and your spirit dwelling with us. In Jesus.